Today we're going to be replacing the sprocket and the brake band on a steel MSA 300 battery powered chainsaw. This unit recently had a recall, so I'm going to be replacing the sprocket and the brake band. The new part number is MA02-007-1004. Your local steel dealer can do the recall replacement free of charge. I just wanted to show you guys a step-by-step -step process on how I went about replacing these parts. I'll start by removing the brake band screw. After that, I'll move over to the metal plate by the chain tensioner. There's one screw holding that on. Go ahead and remove that to take the plate off. Uh, after that, it'll expose that plastic cover underneath. There's two screws holding that on. Next, I'll remove the E-clip. Uh, the E-clip is what's gonna be holding on that washer and then your sprocket. So you'll need to remove that with a flathead screwdriver. Uh, just go ahead and pry till it pops out. Once you get that, take the washer and the sprocket off and that'll expose the sprocket drum. You're gonna need a wrench and a socket to remove the sprocket. Um, when you go ahead and remove that nut, you're gonna be going clockwise to loosen it and you're gonna be going counterclockwise to tighten it back down. After you loosen the nut, go ahead and turn it clockwise to remove it. Uh, once you get that off, go ahead and remove the cover washer and then after that, it'll expose the brake band. Go ahead and take this piece out. I just lightly pry a screwdriver under there to release it, um, pull it out of there, and now you're gonna be able to take the brake band out. So again, make sure your brake band is off. Uh, when your brake is off, you're gonna be able to take a pair of needle nose pliers and just pry on the end there and it pops right off. Um, once you got that spring out of there, you're gonna be able to go ahead and remove the brake band. So it does fit in there tight. Uh, use a screwdriver to pry it loose. Um, you're just gonna go around these little studs and work it off until it comes all the way out. Once you get that, just go ahead and pull it off that other part right there. So the same way you took everything off, go ahead and reinstall everything in the same manner. Um, put the brake band in there, just work it around those studs. Once you get it all the way around there, go ahead and push the end in so that way you can reassemble the screw and hold it into place. So it does take a little bit of work. Uh, you're gonna have to move that brake band and then you're gonna have to push it in and then you're gonna have to wiggle a little more. Um, just keep working it around until you get everything seated in there right. Uh, don't push really hard, don't pry on stuff, just be patient and just keep working around until it fits in the slot. Next, I'm gonna reassemble the brake spring. Go ahead and hook the end on there. And then again, uh, grab your needle nose pliers, grab the side of it so that way you have some room to latch it onto that stud. And just like that, it goes right back on. Make sure your spring is compressed so that way it opens up the brake band so you can reinstall the other parts. Um, notice I am putting chain oil on the perimeter of this uh, piece that is in the specs for the reinstall on these, just putting some light chain lubrication on the edges. Uh, once I get that done, I'll put it back into the machine. Notice the two flat sides to the shaft. Uh, this piece is also gonna have two flat sides so it'll only fit in there one way. So that's it, it's pretty simple repair, pretty straightforward. pretty easy and straightforward repair. I actually did three of the saws the same day. Uh, three of them had the brake band on there that needed to be replaced due to the recall. Um, after I got the first one down and figured out how to remove some of the parts, uh, it took about 10-15 minutes on the other one, so pretty smooth process. So if you guys found this video useful and uh, you like the content I'm creating, make sure you like this video and also subscribe to my YouTube channel.